Hello, I am Alessandra Schutti and I would like to introduce you my co-authors, Pablo Barros, Anna Tanesca and Francisco Cruz. In the next few minutes, they are going to present our work, Moody Learners, explaining competitive behavior of reinforcement learning agents. Hi, my name is Francisco. I'm going to show you the first part of our presentation, which consists of a brief introduction, the motivation of this work, how to estimate a confidence metric, and the research question addressed at the end. Well, in this work we deal with competitive agents, therefore in reinforcement learning scenarios, using these kind of agents, the reward is not really only affected by the environment itself, but also by other agents' actions. Additionally, in markup decision processes, key values contain all the information needed in order to make a decision and take an action. Nevertheless, they do not really reflect all the temporal relation between those actions. For instance, if we take a game scenario, in that context an agent may have a winning or losing streak. This streak may affect the agent's mood and in turn the decisions taken. Therefore, we propose the Moody framework in order to estimate the agent's mood using the key values to compute a confidence metric. And this confidence metric is used then later to fit a neural pleasure arousal model in order to estimate this mood. Uh, we have performed experiments using the chef's hat game. This is a cardboard game which can be played by both humans and robots. Well, this work is in the area of explainable artificial intelligence, which uh, has been widely investigated lately. It does allow to better understand intelligent agents' behavior. However, in continuous or large environment, it's not always feasible to obtain explanation without the formula and extensive manual observations. Additionally, as pointed out, in competitive scenarios, opponents' actions matter, which make it even harder while playing. Particularly in reinforcement learning scenarios, state-based explanations have been mostly used. This is an agent explaining its behavior based on particular features from a given input or state. But less effort has been done in goal-driven explanation. This is agent explaining their behavior based on the contribution that each action makes to successfully finish an intended task. So in these works, uh, explanations are obtained from the agent's knowledge of situation, that is, from the key values. Um, from them, we compute a probability of success, which we use here as a confidence metric. Okay, even though the confidence metric is already a useful parameter to know how confident an agent is in a particular moment, it doesn't actually say directly the temporal correlation of actions, and therefore it cannot be used directly as a mood estimation. Well, as mentioned, we compute the probability of success use in this world as a confidence. So we compute it directly from the Q values. Roughly speaking, the Q values in an episodic reinforcement learning problem can be computed as the reward receives times the discount factor to the power of n. That means, in other words, that the times the discount factor has been applied times the reward received at the final state. Okay, so this is a simplification obtained from the temporal difference equations, which actually doesn't include all the parameters. However, it gives a simple estimation of the key values. And this estimation is relevant in this context because from here we can solve n. And uh, it's useful to have an estimation of the distance in terms of the time steps to the final reward. This distance is the key to the probability of success, which is basically computed using a fixed logarithmic transformation. Okay, um, this logarithmic transformation is done by dividing n, the distance, by 2 times the gamma base logarithmic of 10 plus 1. This transformation is uh, actually made with a constant number. This, this logarithmic uh, is a constant number. Um, the idea of this fixed transformation is actually to reshape and shift the probability of success as an increasing curve between 0 and 1. The parameter sigma shown in the equation is used for scenarios with a stochastic transition, that is, scenarios where an action may lead to different states based on a probability. So this probability is reflected in this sigma parameter. Well, at the end, the last equation shows the uh, probability of success with the uh, value of n, the distance replaced uh, directly by the previous equation uh, shown before. 
and that means that the probability can be computed directly from the q-values. Okay, as we mentioned before, in this work we use the probability of success as a confidence metric for the agents. For instance, in these images, we can see a comparison between q-values and confidence. So the what we can see here that while the q-values are in the reward function domain, the confidence uh, is is transformed into a probability domain, which is well the confidence varies between 0 and 1. In these other images, uh, what well, we can see here a comparison between two um, agents' confidence over time, which are taken from our competitive scenario. First, we have a deep Q-learning agent, which is in definitely the winner, and a PPO agent. We can observe here in these plots that while the confidence of one agent is low, the confidence of the other agent actually increases. Well. Finally, the research question addressed in this work are the following. How do the mood readings provide an understanding of the agent's behavior on the chef's hat games? And second, how close is the representation of the mood estimated by an agent about its opponent from the real mood of each of these opponents? Next, Pablo is going to show you more details about the proposed approach. Hi, I'm Pablo, and I will continue your presentation by introducing our experimental scenario, the chef's hat card game, and our own Moody framework. The Chef Set Card Game is a four-player competitive game that has as a goal to make the most delicious pizza. In the beginning of the game, every player receives a set of cards representing different ingredients. The goal of the card is to be the first player to discard all the cards at your hand. At each round, every player can only do two actions. Discard a card following a simple set of rules or pass its round. The entire game with all the rules, all the set of information we need, was ported to an open gene based environment. This allows us to train reinforcement learning agents, and we focus on two types of reinforcement learning strategies in this paper to play and to win the game. We explore deep learning and proximal policy optimization as two reinforcement learning strategies to train our agent. The state space is composed by all the cards that the player has at hand at that specific time, plus all the cards on the board at that specific time. The action space is formed by 199 different discard actions, which is a combination of all the discard actions allowed by the game rules with one single pass action, totalizing 200 different actions to be done by each player by in each turn. Our agents were trained following the same reward function, which gives a full reward only if that specific action leads to winning the game that allows the agent to explore different action space trajectories that will lead to the maximum reward, meaning that the agent has total freedom to explore uh, how to discover strategies to win the game. Once these agents learn how to play the game, they can use the confidence value to create a self-assessment of their own actions during the game. The confidence value alone, however, does not include any information about game status into its reading. To achieve it, we propose a arousal pleasure transformation to transform the confidence value into an affective information in order to be easier to read and easier to interpret every time an agent does an action. So for example, if an agent does an action and this action has a high confidence, the agent will receive a higher arousal boost because of that. All this transformation was developed in an empirical way, taking into consideration observations we made when humans play the game. If an agent wins a game, it receives by the phone from the environment this explicit information that it won the game. So it receives directly there a higher boost or the highest boost on arousal and pleasure it can receive. One problem we observed when analyzing these effective readings is that they do not carry any temporal information about the previous actions. As the confidence values are calculated based on the current information alone, on the current action alone, all the previous actions are not, or do not impact the current value. To address this problem and to create a temporal correlation within all these readings, we propose the use of a growing and required network that is trained with pairs of uh, pleasure and arousal reading from each action to create prototype neurons that will represent this uh, current effective information. A growing and required network is an unsupervised neural network that creates clusters of prototype neurons that are used to represent perceived inputs. This network 
dynamically grows and shrinks by creating and removing neurons that represent perceived input stimuli. Receiving a pair of arousal and pleasure for every action, the network can identify if it can represent that pair with the neurons it has already created. If not, it creates a new, creates a new neuron to represent this pair. If after epochs and epochs of training and actions and actions, the network realizes that there are neurons inside of its neural representation that are not activated often, meaning they do not represent the recently perceived input stimuli, these neurons are removed. That means that every neuron inside the network represents the recently perceived arousal uh, pleasure pair coming from the agent. So, by reading all the neurons and averaging the read of all the neurons of the network at every time step, we can see how, until that time step, the network evolution of uh, neurons was. And by reading this per time step, we can create an aggregated uh, arousal and pleasure reading of the agent over the entire gameplay. Besides calculating its own mood, each agent can use the same processing pipeline to create an estimated mood of all the three other agents it's playing against, creating then a full holistic representation of how the performance of the game is based on the agent's own assessment. For every action an opponent does, the agent uses the action itself, the card the opponent discarded, the current cards on the game, the amount of cards the opponent has at hand to calculate an estimated confidence of that action. So the agent uses its own understanding of the game, its own knowledge about the game to evaluate the impact of the agent's or of the opponent's action on the game. Using this estimated confidence, the agent creates an estimated arousal and pleasure value, which is then used to train a single self-organizing network, a single growing memory card network that represents the estimated mood for that agent. For each of the three opponents, the agent creates one estimated mood. Putting all these processes together in the same pipeline, we then propose the moody framework. That means that we allow every agent in the game to assess its own actions and the actions of all its opponents based on its own knowledge. By transforming this information into an affective state, which is easy to read by humans, we are able to understand how the game performance is going why the game happens based on an agent's optic. Hi, I'm Anna, and I will talk about the last part of our paper, which covers the experiments that we did in order to address our research questions and the results that we obtained from them. Our two research questions were 1. How does the mood explain the agent's behavior during the game? And 2. How close is the agent's estimated mood about its opponents to the actual real mood that the opponents experience in-game? To address these questions, we propose the following two experiments. Experiment 1, which compares the two metrics of confidence and mood, and sees how they both describe the agent's behavior in-game, and Experiment 2, which then looks into the differences between the self-estimated mood and the estimated mood of others. Our first experiment aims to demonstrate the capabilities of our MUDIC framework when describing the behavior of an agent during its decision-making process in the Chef's Hat game. To do this, we run 10 games of the Chef's Hat, where we are facing two dummy random agents versus one DQL and one PPO agent. During the games, we are collecting the confidence and the mood values of the DQL and PPO agent, and we look into how well they describe the agent's behaviors during the games, as well as during some of the critical points, such as winning a game. Our second experiment, instead, wants to evaluate how well an agent can estimate the performance of another agent in the game. To do so, this time we run 100 games of the chef's hat, where we are facing two DQL and two PPO agents against each other. For each of these games, we collect the confidence and mood values from all four of the agents, as well as the estimated mood and confidence for all of the agents' opponents. At the end, we'll calculate a correlation between each of the confidence and mood values and their estimated values from the opponents. This figure depicts one game that was won by the DQL agent. Here we can see the confidence and the mood metrics 
for both of the agents, that is the DQL and the PPO, during that game. It is interesting to note the differences in the approach by the two learning strategies. The DQL has a more conservative strategy, and it is one where the only high reward is given at the end of the game. The PPO agent learns to give higher rewards for the actions that take place in the beginning of a game, when compared to the ones that take place at the end of the game. On this figure, we can see the confidence and the mood metrics plotted. On the left, we see the confidence values, and on the right, the mood. However, if we wish to observe this by looking at the figures, the confidence metric doesn't provide us with this opportunity. In fact, looking at the figures on the left, we can see that we only have spikes for the high rewards given by the confidence metric and not much else. Just from looking at the figures, it's not super easy to tell which is the agent that won the game. On the other hand, if we look into the figures for the mood, we have a bit of a clearer image. Here, we can see that in the first two games, which the DQL agent won, there is quite a clear difference between the mood of the DQL agent and the mood of the PPO. Then, as DQL starts losing and PPO begins a winning streak, there is an inversion. PPO's mood starts to grow, whereas DQL's arousal and valence drops. This trend is interrupted for a brief moment towards the end of the 10 games, where DQL wins one more game. Here, PPO agent has a drop in its mood as the winning streak is interrupted, and the DQL agent gets a huge boost, since it was in a place of a very, very low mood. Then, since the DQL agent doesn't win any more game, its mood keeps on decreasing and the PPO agent rises. If we want to give each agent their own closed-world representation of the chef's hat game, it is crucial that their estimated mood about their opponents are accurate. Of course, considering that the two learning strategies differ from each other, it's clear that the estimation of the opponent's actions and mood will differ. In order to validate the agent's estimation of their opponent's mood, we run experiment 2, where we have 100 games of the chef's hat facing two DQL agents and two PPO. When the agents are estimating themselves, meaning DQL1 is estimating DQL2, PPO1, PPO2, and vice versa, it's very clear that since they are having the same learning strategies, the estimations are very correct. However, looking into the two metrics, we can see that the mood provides a higher accuracy than the confidence. This is due to the fact that in the beginning of a match, there is a lot of noise when it comes to estimations. Due to the noise in the estimations at the beginning of the match, we can see many different readings for the confidence, as well as many different estimations. However, the prototype neurons of the growing when required network smooth out these differences by directing all of the outputs into a single BMU representation. Table 1 confirms this finding about the differences between estimating the confidence and estimating the mood. In particular, this can be seen in the DQL agents. Their estimation about each other's confidence ranges around 80% of accuracy. However, looking into the estimation for the mood, this increases and reaches nearly 90. This difference is not noticeable with the PPO agent instead. Understandably, there are lower correlations between the DQL and the PPO agents. However, even here we can notice a small difference between the estimated mood and the estimated confidence. The correlation results for the estimated confidence range between 10 and 15% of accuracy, whereas for the mood, this is increased between 15 and 20. This is due to the same principle of the growing when required network smoothing out the differences. Finally, let's talk about why these estimations matter. When we are analyzing the mood and estimated mood of a single agent, we receive an insight into how each of the agents is performing during one game at the action selection time. Giving to each of the agents the capability of measuring not only the impact of their own actions, but also the estimation of other agents' actions, allows them to have a complete understanding of the game scenario. This provides the agent with an important tool that, although not explored in this work, would allow them to interpret any other agent's actions and take this into consideration when performing their own. In this paper, we introduce the Moody framework to explain the behavior of reinforcement learning agents in a competitive game scenario. We demonstrate in the chef's hat card game that the Moody framework provides a much richer explanation of the agent's performances than the introspective-based confidences. In general, we see this work as the basis for the integration of intrinsic-aware agents 
in uh, competitive reinforcement learning scenarios. We envision integrating the mood readings into the action selection process. This way, the performance of the agents will be also modulated by its own understanding of the opponent's performance. Last, in the future we will integrate also personality traits in the agent's mood to create unique social relations. Thank you for your attention and please contact us for any question.